The tooth crown is the part of the tooth that is visible in the oral cavity. In layman's terms, the artificial covering that is fixed over a damaged tooth is called a dental crown. There's a difference between the functional and aesthetic characteristics of a crown. An artificial crown should always achieve the functional aspects, in effect the right fit against the opposing teeth, as well as in the socket. This is the primary responsibility of the dentist. On the other hand, the aesthetic appearance is the primary responsibility of the dental technician, who fabricates the crown. The price of a dental crown has little to do with the materials used, due to the small quantities that are used. With regard to durability and biocompatibility, there are no differences in the materials. All used on humans go through a complicated approval process. The price is directly related to the working time and effort required. This picture illustrates an aesthetically pleasing crown, which is not identifiable unless pointed out. This picture illustrates crowns on the upper teeth, which can be distinguished right away as artificial. Here's the difference between the two. In the first picture, the ceramic has been coated, which means that the patient sat by the dental technician, who laboriously painted onto the ceramic layer after layer until it matched the original teeth. The translucent effect of the tooth can thus be recreated. Not every technician can master this technique. Recreating a beautiful crown is an art. The crowns in the other picture have been made out of a prefabricated shell, and they have been painted according to the color indicated by the dentist. The technician never saw the patient. This is quick and less time-consuming, and so costs less money. Differences between dentists do exist with regard to the fabrication of crowns from the functional point of view. This is why some crowns last for 30 years or more, whereas some last for only a few years. A crucial factor for durability is the manner in which the tooth was ground or cut by the dentist. A quick and easy way is the so-called tangential abrasion. The tooth is simply beveled. The disadvantage of this technique is that the technician has to leave a certain residual thickness of the ceramic while fabricating the crown, otherwise it would break. The result is ugly, overlapping, lumpy edges. In order to hide these, the crown margins are prepared below the gum margin, the gingival margin, because of which a dental probe and or dental floss can get stuck on the edges of such crowns, as can food particles. These food particles cause inflammation of the gingiva, or gingivitis, with recurrent bleeding. As the years go by, the constant inflammation leads to recession of the gingiva. The edges of the crown therefore get exposed, and the risk of developing root caries is now increased. Another possible technique for crown cutting is the so-called stepped abrasion. This is also a relatively quick process. Unfortunately, the adhesive does not flow very well during cementation, creating a wide joint in the glue. As a result, there is a risk the adhesive, usually cement, can get washed away with time, for example by brushing. This will once again increase the risk of root caries. In the round margin abrasion technique, the advantages of the other techniques are combined and the disadvantages are eliminated. However, this technique is the most complex. The adhesive can flow easily during cementation. This allows for a thin joint. The technician has enough room for the ceramic and the edges are tightly closed, preventing food lodgement. To achieve a round margin, cutting must be performed under magnification. Furthermore, particular criteria must be observed while taking the impression. For example, before the impression is taken, two gingival retraction cords should be placed, one of which should be removed just before taking the impression. There are various pastes that can replace the gingival retraction cord, but sometimes these chemicals react with the impression medium and can cause distortion. The result will be an ill-fitting crown. Why are gingival retraction cords necessary? First, because the gingiva must not be cut, and second, because the preparation margin should be placed in the so-called sulcus, in effect below the visible border of the gingiva. The first gingival retraction cord deflects the gingiva to one side in order to avoid injury while cutting. It also ensures that the preparation margins are placed in the sulcus. Fair enough, but why two gingival retraction cords? Once the technician pours plaster into the impression, this creates a plaster model of the teeth. Because the margins of the prepared crown must fit tightly along all the edges, these edges should be clearly visible to the technician in the impression. Therefore, the impression material should flow right up to the preparation margins. By laying the second gingival retraction cord, the gums are deflected in the other direction. When the second gingival retraction cord is removed just before the impression is taken, the impression material will clearly record the preparation margins. On the right of this animation, the preparation margin is clearly visible. 
On the left, the consequences of not using ligatures can be seen. The plaster mold does not correspond to the prepared tooth as the impression material has not recorded the preparation margins. This could be because of the presence of interfering gingiva and or blood or saliva. The technician will unknowingly prepare an ill-fitting crown. Although many other factors contribute to a good crown, the working methods described here clearly show why the quality and price can vary so much. A good crown does not cause inflammation or recession of the gingiva. It is indistinguishable from the original tooth and lasts for decades. Even if it needs to be replaced, the underlying tooth stump will always be in good shape. There can be certain alternatives to tooth crowns for restoring a damaged tooth. In cases with high aesthetic requirements, veneers and or bleaching may perhaps be a better alternative to a crown. If tooth alignment is an issue, then braces come into the picture. The particular risks when crowning a tooth are as follows. Death of the nerve or pulp if, for example, the tooth is excessively cut. The consequence is a root canal treatment. Injury to the neighboring teeth, mucosa, floor of the mouth, tongue, or cheeks. Gingival problems or receding gingiva, especially if preparation margins are incorrect or if the gingiva is injured while cutting. Dentists refer to this as injury of the biological areas. And finally, an incorrect bite, painful jaw joint, or headaches if the bite is unintentionally altered by the newly crowned tooth.